In this video, we'll present how to define wind load in strap. We'll use the model that is presented on the screen. It's a one-story steel structure with a monopitched roof. Strap will divide the structure to wall panels and roof panels and will calculate and generate the wind loads according to the code we'll choose. Before we head to the load definition, there is an important issue we need to focus on. In cases of an unsymmetric pitch roof, like in our case, the user need to create a plane that is parallel to the base plan. This plane will help strap to separate the roof from the rest of the structure. The plane is defined by four nodes. Let's display the node numbers. The plane was defined by nodes 3, 81, 90, and 56. As we can see, the height of the structure on the ridge side is 9 meters, and 7 meters on the other side. All the nodes that define the plane must have x3 coordinate of 7 meters. By requesting data for node number 3, we can see that the x3 coordinate of node number 3 is 7 meters. The same for node 56. Node 81 also have an x3 coordinate of 7 meters. And for node 90, we can also see 7 meters for the x3 coordinate. So we created a plane by the definition of four nodes. This plane is parallel to the base plan of our structure and separates the roof from the rest of the structure. Now, after the geometry definition, we can head on to the loads module. Clicking the wind load icon will present the wind loads window. In it, we can define a new wind load case. We can revise an existing load case we can copy and revise an existing load case and we can display or print the wind load data. We will define a new load case. In the next window, wind load type, we'll be asked to set some parameters of our load case. The first parameter is the height direction of our model. We can see that the height direction is the x3 axis. Now, the user must set the loaded area. Five options are available. User defined panel. This option will allow the user to define one panel in the structure by defining its contour line and to load only the defined panel. Building contour and roof. This option will allow the user to define the entire structure by selecting contour lines and strap will calculate the wind loads for all panels of the structure. Roof only. This option will allow the user to define the roof of the structure. Strap will calculate the wind load only for the roof. Lettuce and tower. For this option, strap will assume that the structure is an open structure, which means that wind blows through the structure. Strap will calculate the wind load and apply it as beam loads according to the selected code. This option is suitable for structures like open trusses, electric poles, etc. Selected beams. This option will allow the user to select specific beams and define the perpendicular panel width. Strap will generate a linear beam loads on a selected beams. This is the only option to define wind load for a 2D plane frame model. Also in this window, the user must define how to apply the load. The global wind loads the strap will calculate can be applied on joints, elements, on all the beams inside the global load perimeter, or on the selected beams inside the global load perimeter. For our example, we will choose to load the entire structure, building, contour, and roof, and to apply the load to all the beams. 
we'll name our load case wind plus x1 since our wind direction will be in the plus x1 direction. Now Strap is asking to select a node from the base level of our model. As we click the node we get a view of our base level and now we'll define our base level contour. In the next window, End of Contour, the user is asked to define more contours at base level if necessary, define a new contour at top level if necessary, to define the roof contour if it's different from our less defined contour. Current top level is 7 meters. It's the starting point of our roof in the x3 direction. In our example, we don't have any more contours, so we can end the contour definition. The next window is Building Roof. The user must select parameters regarding the roof of the structure. We have four options for the roof type. Flat, monopitched, duopitched, multispan, or we can choose to ignore the roof. The roof in our example is monopitched. Next, we'll set the ridge direction according to the main coordinate system, in our case, x2 direction. Next, we'll have to select between three options if our building is open or closed, according to the code we are working with. In our case, we are working with a partially enclosed building. CP value direction will set the direction of the pressure on the roof. For codes that demand to consider both situations, the user must create two load cases for the same wind direction, one with an upward value and one with a downward value. CPI is the internal pressure coefficient. This coefficient must be determined by the user and to be inserted manually. In our case, we'll insert 0 0.8. Now the program asks us to select a node on the structure's ridge. In the next window, Wind Load Parameters, the user must select a code. In our example, we'll select the Euro code. In addition, the user must insert the wind speed. The wind pressure is calculated automatically by strap. Parameters for CE must be set by the user according to the selected code. And finally, the user must set the wind direction according to the global coordinate system. Now, after Strap created the load case, we can review it by asking to display wind load data. The wind load parameters window will present all the parameters Strap used to generate the load and all the panels it created. We can also display the global loads Strap generated with the view revise an existing load. We'll isolate the roof so we can see the panels more clearly. We can see the load panels on our roof. We can also display the load distribution. Clicking display, then global loads on beams. Now select to display the load area distribution and we can see how the load is being distributed to the beams. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.